In this video, I'm going to cover some more advanced networking setups. I wrote up this little thing and put it on my GitHub. I'll have a link down below in the description. And uh, some of this here is going to be more geared towards um, if you have like a network of machines. Um, so I'll get into uh, the config directory and some of these other things here. But for the first one, uh, I'll just sort of go over this one. I've done it before in some other videos. But this is how the people who created Plan 9 sort of originally envisioned dialing outside of your uh, local network. So since they had the concept of, you know, namespaces, everything being a file, everything being able to be imported from other machines and put into any sort of, uh, you know, you can change your namespace however you want. Uh, you just pull in the interface, an outside facing interface from a machine, uh, put it in your local namespace, and then you'd be able to use it. So, pretty straightforward to do on this machine here. I already have it set up because it's my gateway machine. So, I already have something in uh, net.alt that's facing out. Now, by default, basically all the programs that deal with networking just use uh, slash net. Um, but you can specify things. So if I wanted to, I can do ping. But if I just put in an address, it will use a, you know, slash net. But I can actually tell it to use a specific um, IP stack. So I can tell it to use, since this is ping, this will be over ICMP. And I can tell it to dial the gateway on my outside network. And so ping is just using um, the networking stack in net alt. And of course, the way you would just typically do this is you'd import it. You would just uh, find net alt or whatever, wherever you had uh, mounted that uh, imported uh, networking stack. Just put it over net. And now if I check in net, it has that ether three device and I can ping the outside again. Oops. IP ping. And so, yeah, that's just kind of the basic import an outside facing interface into your local namespace and just use it. So in my case here, I sort of demonstrate how you can make some little scripts and have them automatically run at startup so that you could configure an outside facing, um, you know, interface if you have a machine with uh, multiple networking ports. So all these examples here I'm doing, um, basing it off of my actual gateway machine, which is like a cheapo Dell Optiplex, one of those little half height ones. And I found a low profile um, Intel four port NIC and dropped it in there. So there's one port that comes with the motherboard and then four additional. So I have a total of five, that's zero through four. The next one I'll go on to is a uh, credit to Moody. I ripped this off from him. So I have a link to his, uh, website where he has this uh, broken down a little bit more. But what this will do is this sets up your typical uh, NAT gateway. So NAT for network address translation. And so this one here, this example I'm showing has, you know, one ethernet port for the inside connection, one for the outside. And what it'll do is run through and manually kind of set up um, the cards. This is sort of stuff that's kind of typically done automatically by um, IP config, but you can also do all this stuff manually if you want to do something a little bit more interesting. So in this case here, it sets up the interface, um, sets up some IP addresses for it and some routes. Goes all the way through down to here and then actually sets them up on your network. And uh, for the outside facing one, gives it this additional sort of T flag, which turns on the uh, network address translation. 
I remember right, this is something that's particular to 9 front. I don't think Plan 9 does this. But I can show how I ended up setting it up specifically on mine. Make this a little bigger. So yeah, I have uh, the inside, the outside. So yeah, what this is saying here is we're going to set um, an IP address for, let's see, this would be the, um, the outside facing one. So on here where it says this like, this little piece of the network here is 69. These are basically just two sort of fake IP addresses that are just used to route between um, Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. So there's going to be an IP address. In this case, it's uh, this is what it looks like inside my network. So I set up my, um, my NDB local. Yeah. NDB local. So I put that in my NDB local um, as my gateway. And so anything that happens to hook up inside my grid here and gets a DHCP, this will be sent along to it along with DNS and all that. So the outside facing one, um, I actually gave mine a, uh, a static IP, but you can also set it up like if you had this thing hooked into, say you're directly into your ISP, um, you could just drop all this sort of stuff, just put the um, you know, IP config, you put the X here that says, this specifies, because again, IP config, like so many other things, is going to default to thinking you're using whatever's in .NET. This is to specify, hey, I'm using a stack in a different directory. Um, and these sort of things can actually be in any directory. So, um, and yeah, I have a, a fake directory here. So I have nothing in it. I can go ahead and just bind. Uh, let's see, let's do interface three to this directory in my home directory. Uh, give it. Uh, IP stack I3. Oops, I should make that after. And then, of course, I can. Now I have this full network interface and IP stack in this directory, you know, in my, my home directory. And I can use ping in there. So ping in here, ICMP. And I can dial the outside world. So for the most, you know, for the most part, it really doesn't matter where you put these things so long as you actually tell the software that's uh, using it that, you know, you're using something in a non-standard location. But this does work, so right now if I just open up anything and I uh, can Google, it goes ahead and dials to the outside world, just uses a standard gateway. So for all those wondering, you know, how do I set up just a gateway with network address translation, uh, that is quite doable. And uh, again, credit to Moody for uh, coming up with this one. So another one I came across, this is on a nine lab.org was a very basic tunnel to get from one machine to another. And the way you do this is you could say, have your outside machine or your inside machine here, do an export, um, and just send in this case, everything from root to another machine and on the other machine. So this dash S here means, um, what it should look like in the slash serve directory. And then on the outside machine, um, sometimes it takes a little while for this to actually, for the connection to be made and all the information to be sent over, especially depending on whether there's a authentication or anything involved. Um, you know, you can then mount that thing in, 
you know, once it pops up in your server directory, um, and just, you know, mount it in N. And from there, since, you know, in this example here, they're sending the whole root directory, whatever's in the namespace that, that Rexport's being run in, uh, will get sent over. That's typically everything. And in this case, they're saying, well, you know, you can just grab, say, um, whatever's in their net.alt, or net, drop it in your net.alt, and then you can then say use RCPU to dial into machines inside that network through the network interface that was exported from that grid. Um, and that's one way to do it. I had a, another example, and this is one I demonstrated previously before too. So, and what I did on this one was I set up some basically virtual Ethernet interfaces using the sync option here. And so, like I said before, mine has five ports on it, zero through four. So I went ahead and did um, number five. Uh, in this case, you have to give it a MAC address. So I made one up, popped it in net.alt, and started configuring it. And this will work inside uh, inside my grid. And so it'll have IP address 99. And then I, you know, one of the things I do is I package it all up into a uh, place to mount it. So I have it in serve as net five. And I also have it just sort of um, automatically mount in, uh, in N. So it's there. So what I can do with that is I have another machine. Now this one's not inside my grid and it doesn't even have, uh, it's not even the same authentication domain. So it's different users and everything on this machine. But I can export to it. So I already have like a connection set up, so this makes it kind of easy. But what I can do, let's see, we'll call it net5 again, or we'll call it net.inside. I'll send net5 to the machine called central. And I'll check and see if it popped up. Not yet. Give it a second here. Oh, no, yeah, called it net.inside, that's right. So it is here. It was here the whole time. I was expecting net.5. Anyway, so I can go ahead and, let's just say in this window here, I can go ahead and mount, um, serve net.inside onto my default net directory for this window here. So now I can go ahead and ping machines inside my network through that interface. I'm not sure, let's just double check here. I don't think I can do it from like the standard. Yeah, I can't see it from the standard network interface on here. It can just see inside its own grid. And one of the things you can actually do is from this point here, you can even run listeners. So from inside this, you know, grid here, I could then interact with this machine. Um, you know, something you could do with this is say you had a virtual private server set up somewhere out on the internet. You could script everything together so that your home network then sort of initiates the connection by sending a, uh, a virtual ethernet interface to your um, your VPS, and then on that end, have it set up listeners and whatever so that you could say RCPU into it or um, kind of set up anything. You know, you could have listeners to export the file system so that you could mess with the files, whatever you want to do. But it would then, you could set it up so it has like an IP inside your network. So from inside the grid here, oops, 
Well, it doesn't really matter. Since the thing already has like a IP stack set up, it'll ping no matter what. But you can ping it and everything. So, actually I could do something really simple like, uh, let's see, listen. Let's see, what would I set it up as? Listen. Um, an echo. Now I need to. Oh, yeah, I need to tell it where to listen to. So, aux, listen one. Be verbose. Uh, we'll listen on TCP. Or anything on port um, 999, and we'll run echo. So, from over here, if I just uh, see on port 9999. So let's go ahead and answer that call from this grid on that virtual Ethernet interface that it imported and now is running a listener on. So, not too bad. So, that's another fun one you can kind of do. Didn't kill that. So yeah, and the way I just sort of run these things is you can just sort of cram all this into your CPU start or CPU RC. Um, something to keep in mind depending on what's going on during your setup is that uh, CPU RC is run um, earlier in the um, configuration and CPU starts basically run at the end. And uh, that's actually just covered in the standard sort of um, the RC bin. CPURC, the standard setup script that runs. So you can see at the end here is where it finds that, you know, if you have a custom CPU start, it'll run it. Whereas um, the other CPURC scripts are run a lot sooner in the setup. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, also, another thing is um, when you start getting into this, you'll start having to run uh, custom namespaces for your machine. So in this case here, like I said, I have this one so it always mounts um, these virtual ones over into N. Um, you know, always mounts this uh, Net3 I have into Alt. So that'll appear in any namespace in on gate here. So... Um, no matter what, it'll always show up. So I can always check net.alt and it's there. And I can always look in N and it's there. So, yeah, you'll have to get into some sort of custom namespace things. Um, and I had some examples too in here uh, where I had to do that for some other setups, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, running listeners over, say, on the on the foreign machine. Like, I ran just a listen one in a namespace that was already set up with um, that imported Ethernet interface in my default slash net. If it's going to be anywhere else, you have to sort of inform the listeners. Um, you have to give them a new sort of namespace recipe that includes those um, those networking devices. Otherwise, it will just sort of look in the defaults. So that's also another thing to keep in mind is uh, having to, you know, pass namespaces to um, listen um, that has those uh, extra configurations for your network included. So, but anyway, I hope that was informative. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to leave a comment. And as always, have fun.